Welcome to City and State TV. I'm Executive Editor Michael Johnson, and I'm joined today by David Yasky, the Dean of Pace Law School. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. And we wanted to bring you in because um, there's, a, there's a, I guess, troubling trend in, in law schools across the country with enrollment dropping, and I know this is something that uh, Pace has taken a lot of steps to address going forward. Um, first, let's talk about the, uh, the issue. I know uh, enrollment's dropped 30% in the last four years. Levels are now as low as they've been in like the 1970s. What, why is this happening? Well, there's really two things going on, and you're right, it's a sea change period in legal education. Uh, the, the first thing is what's going on with enrollments, and what we had there was, there was a bubble in the 2000s. Too many people went to law school in 2006, 7, 8, and then when they got out, there weren't enough jobs for them. Now, students saw that, and they not just reacted, but they overreacted. So you've seen uh, applications drop the huge numbers you've seen. Now there are too few. They're the same number of people started law school this year as started law school in 1970. Now, the economy is two and a half times bigger. There's no way that's enough people going to law school. It's all like what you're seeing you know, today with the Chinese stock market, crazy, falling like a stone. It'll settle out at the right number. Same with law school applications. Over the next few years, you'll see them normalize. Now, th at the same time, though, it's in some ways there's a good um, outcome which is it's forcing law schools to grapple with the fact that for years they've gotten too divorced from the practice of law you know law firms they need people who can graduate and go right to work and law schools when times were good they didn't really have to pay attention to that now uh, at least we at Pace understand um, we're educating people who are going to go out and practice law and need to provide value to clients day one so we've reorganized our curriculum completely around the idea of a path to practice. You come, you have the traditional first year, that's where you learn to think like a lawyer. Then you, take, you, you concentrate, whether it's litigation or business law or real estate, land use, criminal practice, matrimonial, financial compliance. You're going to do a course of study that's suited to a particular field of practice and that culminates in a semester of supervised practice. You're out in the field, just like doctors are trained, starts in the classroom and then you gradually add more practical skill. Same with what we're doing for lawyers, um, starts in the classroom and then you want you go to a law firm or a DA's office or a government agency and you spend a full semester in supervised practice. Interesting. Before I talk to you more about this, uh, you know, straight to the, the life, real life experience of two, yeah. before, I, before I wanted to just address a couple of things that you guys did uh, to address the short term problem, I guess, with the drop in enrollment. I know you um, provided more scholarships, you dropped your uh, out of state tuition. Um, talk a little bit why you made those moves. And are those temporary moves or do you think that that's just kind of the, the process that's going to have to go through going forward? Right. So during the boom years, law school tuitions also rose dramatically and beyond what, um, uh, what the market really can bear. You know, the tuition's got to be pegged to what's the uh, salary going to be when somebody gets out of law school. Um, so we're adding a lot more financial aid to make sure that our students don't graduate with unmanageable debt. Um, and you, you do it, you know, in a thoughtful way um, so that aid is tied to the student's record, um, but also we recognize that we're competing with um, state schools in Missouri and Kansas that have much lower tuitions than Pace Law School does. Now, a lot of students uh, in the Midwest, the West, they want to come to New York because this is the center of legal, this is far and away the biggest legal marketplace in the country, one of the biggest legal marketplace in the world, and not just New York City, but where we are in White Plains, there's a thriving regional economy in Westchester that has its own um, set of law firms. So a lot of students would like to come here and, and practice. Um, we have to make sure they can do it affordably and that it's not an, such a, an enormous sacrifice compared to the in-state tuition they'd be paying in their home state. So um, that's why we, we have organized our uh, tuition schedule in a very thoughtful and targeted way. 
And I know you also had your uh, staff take cuts, and you yourself had to take a cut for this. Again, is that is this temporary movement? You think you think the market is going to flatten back out, and there's going to be enrollments that are going to go back up again? You know, a academia is often kind of insulated from the marketplace, and in some ways, that's good. You know, on the research side, that's great, yeah. right? You want people doing um, pharmaceutical research that is just pure and about the facts, and is not t you know, commercial. Um, but in terms of the operation of the the entity, you know, you have to understand revenue coming in has got to equal expenses going out. Um, in this period where there are fewer students and where tuition's been adjusted, we had to adjust our cost structure. You know, all, law schools across the country, you're, you're seeing this, and we're very fortunate to be part of a larger university, Pace University, right, headquartered here downtown uh, Manhattan. Um, and, you know, the support from the university is enabling us to keep our program strong, even as revenue has dropped some. But, you know, it also means that we've had to adjust our internal cost structure. And fortunately, we have a terrific faculty. They are not just um, dedicated teachers in the classroom, but they really care about how are our students going to do when they get out. And, you know, that's why they were willing to take the step of, um, we'll tighten our belts to make sure we don't have to affect the programs for students. And uh, we'll get back now to the uh, the hands-on approach you guys are taking. Um, is there is, is that the future, I guess, of law school in general? Do people do all law schools kind of have to make this this change to start to teach in a different way and approach teaching law in a different way? Yeah, look, I'm convinced that's the future, and um, I'm proud that Pace is kind of getting out front and uh, leading the way to that future. You know, the, the as I say. Law school teach you to think like a lawyer, very important, and that's real, and that is a, a whole set of intellectual equipment. For me, the first year of law school was transformational and um, gave me the, the habits of mind I've had for the rest of my career. Um, but we've got to do more than that, not just think like a lawyer. You have to learn to act like a lawyer so that you can provide benefit to a client when you get out. Now, that's not something that you learn in the classroom. That's something that you absorb from people who know what they're doing. Um, that's why that semester of supervised practice is such an integral part of our program. Interesting. I, I think you will see more and more law schools move in that direction. It, it's also a way of kind of um, enmeshing legal academia more closely with practice. Look, I started teaching 20 years ago in law school, and even then you'd have law firms grumbling, well, they, they get out and we still have to teach them everything. Mm -hmm. um, we've got to step up and work more closely with the practicing bar so that when a student gets out of law school, it's much more of a seamless transition into practice.